Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. This is an update to a video I posted a couple three days ago now about my Dell Precision T3500 workstation and for those of you who care I have made a lot of changes since that video was posted. I was really tired when I did that video. I was said something in there about a math coprocessor and somebody joked on me about it in the comments. Yeah I know I was just really about half asleep. I did that thing at about 12, 12.30 at night because I had been fooling around with the computer all evening long and finally got it to a point where I could record a video. So a lot has changed since then and a lot of folks out there who saw this original video made some really great suggestions and thank you very much. I do appreciate it. First thing that you're going to notice here if you watch the last video is now the machine reports eight cores instead of four cores and that is because I went into the BIOS and enabled multi-threading so it sees eight logical cores now and reports it on a program like HTOP so that is very cool and also I was able to get the memory up to 12 gigabytes in this machine now and that turned out to be quite a little saga Somebody had suggested that uh, there was uh, some memory that was available on eBay that would work in this machine, and I looked at it, and it looked good to me, and I went ahead and ordered it up, and it cost me about 40 bucks plus shipping. I figured, hey, if I can get 24 gigabytes of ECC DDR3 for 40 bucks, that's worth a shot. Unfortunately, the memory arrived this morning, and I was all excited, and I took took a picture of it before I took it you know, out of its little press bag here and it didn't work it doesn't work at all the machine was not happy with this I had many nasty post beeps and it just wouldn't do anything with this memory and I tried three or four different configurations and nothing worked I tried one chip at a time it's not one chip bad it's just it doesn't like this memory so either I have made a mistake and ordered the wrong memory or the memory isn't good I don't know which I'm pretty sure that it's the 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 former that's the problem not the latter I think I made a mistake and just got the wrong kind of memory so I went ahead and cannibalized the old Dell and took some chips out of that and I was able to get six two gigabyte chips to put in the machine and that is what we're running now and uh, the machine will run happily mixed ECC and non ECC so the first bank of chips the first six gigabytes is ECC and the second is non ECC and the bias did not complain when you boot this machine up if it does not like the configuration of memory even though it boots it will put a warning message up there and say this is not optimal so I had to figure out exactly how to get everything in there to get it to work and I did and it works okay so that's this is where we're at and with 12 gigabytes of memory I was able to run four virtual machines with two gigabytes allotted to each machine with absolutely no problems and uh, also since I did that last video you may have noticed we're running a different desktop this is Linux Mint with the Cinnamon desktop 18.1 my original installation was Linux Mint XFCE and um, XFCE was alright but I wanted to reinstall anyway because I wanted to change some things and I thought well I'm gonna put Cinnamon on here because uh, yeah, I was really in love with XFCE, and then I used it for a little while, and I kind of started really missing Cinnamon. It's a workflow thing. There's nothing wrong with XFCE. It's just I'm very used to working with Cinnamon and uh, all the keyboard shortcuts and everything, so it gets kind of annoying, you know. I'm used to kind of get that way with any desktop. If I use it for any period of time and I get used to it, and then I move to something else, I'm like, eh, for a little while. Um, so what I did was the machine has... Uh, RAID 1 running, there are two 1 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar Black drives running in RAID 1, which means they're mirrored. This makes for slightly faster read performance over just having one disk, but it makes for slightly slower write performance, having the thing have to write to two disks simultaneously. Uh, so it's kind of half dozen to one, six of the other as far as performance is concerned. But the big advantage is, is that if one of those disks just up and dies, the machine doesn't stop working. It actually will give me a warning message when it boots up and it'll tell me, hey, one of the disks in the RAID array is not working. And fortunately, I've got some of these uh, for, for spare. I've actually got four of them. So if one just up and dies, no big deal. I'll grab the other one and then tell the RAID to rebuild itself and we'll be back to exactly where we were. So 
yeah, probably could get a little bit better performance if I was running one disc at this point, depending on what I was doing. But that extra little bit of security, it's worth uh, dealing with flat performance as far as I'm concerned. And on read, it is a little bit better. It's a little bit faster on read. Somebody said it doesn't make any difference. Yes, it does, because the RAID controller, when it goes to read data to send to the operating system, it can choose which disk to read, whichever one is more available, and it can also uh, read simultaneously. So if you're doing real quick reads and it's reading a lot of little things, it can actually do them asynchronously. And if you are reading one big long file, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. It's not going to go twice as fast. So it depends on what you're doing when you, if you see the, you know, the changes there. And so I have it set up where it's two partitions on the disk. There's a 50 gigabyte partition up front for the system. And then there is a two gigabyte swap file in that partition. I'm not using swap as a you know a swap parti uh, swap partition itself I've, I'm using a swap file because with 12 gigs of memory and what I do with it this machine probably will never swap but all of the Linux kernel gurus that I have talked to have said that you have to have some swap available some programs that run on Linux need that swap space they actually access it independently so therefore I like to have a little bit of uh, swap space around and if I get real crazy one day and I'm running like six virtual machines and something goes crazy and starts sucking up memory uh, it, it can swap out and that way it at least it won't just run out of memory and crash which is what can happen actually it's not that the system will run completely out of memory and crash it'll just start dumping things that it, in other words, it's not going to be, if it has no place to swap and it runs out of physical memory, it will just start killing processes. And if you have swap, then it'll start swapping it. And if it starts swapping it, the machine slows down a little bit. You can tell what's going on. It's like, whoa, hold on. So anyway, that's the uh, swap thing. I don't want to hear, well, you got all that RAM, you don't need swap. Even if you got 64 gigabits of RAM, gigabytes rather, of RAM in your machine, you're going to have to set aside a little swap space. So. I used a swap file for that and things are running along smoothly now the only thing that I might want to do when I bought this computer I think I have a picture on the video here I think the next picture after this let's see yeah there it is if you look real close here you will notice that um, what's in here is a couple of Western Digital Velociraptor drives and these are 160 gigabytes a piece now I was in too excited and too much in a hurry to check the condition of these drives. I should have done that because I don't know how many hours is on those drives. What I'm thinking maybe I might do is get out of RAID and put it back in single disk mode and then use one of these drives as a system drive just to hold the Linux system itself and then you and use one of my uh, 7200 RPM drives for the home directory so have that spread across across two drives these are 10,000 rpm and they have 16 megabyte cache on them so I would imagine that they're pretty fast so I uh, will see what happens with that and speaking of raid and I must do this real quick for those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about because uh, a lot of people who have used desktop computers may not be familiar with raid uh, raid is a system it's an array of disks and you have a controller and you can set it up in all of these different modes so if I open disks here and we take a look you'll see that I have my two hard drives and it's reporting the temperature and uh, they're both running well one's at 95 and one is 100 that's good they run very cool in this computer the airflow is nice which is nice and then down here you'll see uh, this one terabyte block device this is the RAID controller itself and this is what it shows to the system so there are two partitions here this one's just for the system the OS and this is my partition for home and if I would turn RAID off this would go away and then I'd have one drive that would hold the system and one for home and with that 160 gigabyte 10,000 RPM Velociraptor drive holding the system it would really speed up boot time and also having two separate drives would help as well right now if uh, 
the like for instance I'm running a virtual machine and then I go to open up something else and it has to access the drive if the virtual machine is taking up a lot of disk IO it will slow everything else down on the system and uh, if I go to open like uh, you know the home folder or something like that it actually will take it some time to load whereas now it just pops right up it's no big deal uh, and that's just because you're basically pulling all of the data from this one block device here which has two disks under it but they're running mirror mode so it's not a huge speed improvement so I don't know I'm I like having raid enabled mirroring it's very secure and I'm don't have to worry about the machine not booting up but I may or may not do that and uh, this machine is extraordinarily stable uh, I hope it continues to be that way I just changed all of the the memory configuration in this thing and I'm now mixing ECC with non ECC memory and I will see how that works if I start getting errors when it goes to sleep or something like that I'll know where it's coming from uh, it has been very stable and it I just walk away from it and it's set to go to sleep after an hour of idle time and it goes to sleep and then I walk back over to it turn it back on the internet stays connected everything works doesn't come up with any errors it has not locked up crashed or anything and I have tried on several occasions to like open a whole bunch of stuff up see if I could actually lock up the system I can't do it so yeah I'm real happy with it and I do know this is an older machine some people rib me on that and say well you're gonna get real hardware hey this is real hardware for me I mean, this thing is like a monster y'all and uh, you know if I had a couple thousand dollars that I could just plunk down on a computer I'd go out and buy me a new system 76 but I don't have that so if I come across a machine like that and if somebody like easy Sid is nice enough to uh, make it possible for me to get my hands on it I'm gonna be very thankful and I am and this will do exactly what I need it to do so very tickled about it thanks for watching the vid gang check out easy Linux on the web check out easy Linux on Facebook check out freedompenguin.com for lots of cool stories about Linux and I do appreciate your time we will talk again soon